All right, everyone, I want to ask that you invite your friends, your family, loved ones, or anyone viewing this video. If you're a skeptic, if you just don't believe there is a God, and you don't believe that heaven is real, it's a fairy tale, um, there is no hell, that when you die, you're just gone. You don't want to hear any of this religious mumbo-jumbo garbage. Um, you need to physically see, touch, smell, feel God, or you just don't believe there is a God. You believe more of the uh, evolution theory, uh, the scientific uh, viewpoint on how the Earth became formed uh, from a spark that ignited out in the deepest, blackest depths of space. You just don't believe in God. That when you die, that's all there is. You're dead and you're gone. I want to share with you uh, an actual experience that happened to me when I was a young boy. And I think I mentioned this on uh, some prior videos way back last year, that I would tell my story when the time was right. Well, the time right now to tell my story is right. I want to assure you that this is not all there is. We are just here temporarily in this body that was formed from the dust of the ground. We are here only for a short while. Then you're going to spend eternity. Your spirit is going to spend eternity somewhere. And that's your choice. That's your free will. Your choice of where you're going to spend eternity. You can spend it in that place you don't believe exists. That I tell you the truth. It does exist. Heaven is very real. Or you're going to spend it in the lake of fire. Hell is just as real as heaven. Before we begin, um, those of you that are saved, my Christian brothers and sisters, get out your Bible, your King James Bible. Turn to Genesis 2. I'm going to try to keep this video short, but I need to get to the point here. Genesis chapter 2. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. And on the seventh day God ended his work which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because that in it he had rested from all his work which God created and made. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created, in the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens, and every plant of the field before it was in the earth, and every herb of the field before it grew. For the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was not a man to till the ground. But there went up a mist from the earth and watered the whole face of the earth. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. God formed man from the dust of the ground and he breathed into his nostrils and man became a living soul. When you die, that's not all there is. There is a heaven and it is a real glorious, glorious, spectacular place. I want to share with you a true story, a true experience that happened to me uh, when I was a young boy. Uh, we always grew up in a strict Christian uh, household. My mother died when I was nine years old from cancer and I knew how much she loved the Lord how much she loved Yahweh how much she loved Yeshua and I couldn't understand that she, why at such a young age was she taken from me and I had questions as a young boy even though we went to church all the time is she really in this place is she really in heaven and growing up being young I was nine years old uh, with my brother Edward and my sister Suzanne. Uh, kids can be cruel. They used to tease us and call us, look at them, look at them kids. They're orphans because we didn't have a father in our life. And our grandmother took over 
uh, the, the job of raising the three of us. So kids would be teasing us, and oh, look at these kids, they're orphans. But we weren't orphans, and it hurt, it hurt very deep. And we get teased, so their mother died, oh, their mother passed away. But I wonder where did she go, is it really a heaven? And it was about a year later that I had an experience that, till this day, uh, is, I know what happened, but it's unexplainable. We were getting ready for church, it was a Sunday, as every Sunday getting our shoes shined, my brother and I, my sister's putting on her pretty dress, and uh, we had to make sure our hair was slicked back, we used grease back then, <laughs> greasing our hair, me and my brother, and we went to church, my aunt uh, lived with us, and I was kind of her favorite, her pet, and her name was Ida, so she kind of, no matter what I did, uh, I could do no wrong in her eyes, she kind of just uh, mothered me, along with my grandmother, so I guess I used to have a little bit spoiled at a young age, especially after my mother passed away. I remember being in church and it was hot. It was very hot outside. And I'm sitting there with my grandmother, my uh, aunt, my brother Edward, my sister Suzanne. And as the uh, pastor was uh, preaching, there was a candle. And I looked at this candle. And I was watching the flame flicker on the candle. And all of a sudden the flame started to kind of like, uh, I don't want to say liquefy, it kind of became, instead of a flame, it started to kind of get misty. And it started to form like a white, white cloud-like substance. And the candle wasn't a candle anymore. And it was just like this white cloud. And then brilliant, brilliant light surrounded this cloud. And it was the most warmest feeling of comfort and love that a little ten-year-old boy, at that time I'm ten, it was a year later, I couldn't understand what was happening. And I could hear music playing, and I could feel the breeze coming in the window of the church, and it would blow past my face, and it would be beautiful music. And I don't know where I was, but I wasn't in church anymore. I was in this most beautiful, beautiful, surrounded by this most beautiful blinding, I will say blinding, blinding light I couldn't look directly at and I could feel a presence near me of just comfort. I don't know how else to explain it, it's the most perfect comfort and love. And I knew this was where my mother was at, this wonderful, glorious place. I didn't see her, I didn't see any loved ones that had passed away. I don't remember going through a tunnel of any kind. I just, the candle started to kind of like get misty and it turned like a cloud and I, I went into this cloud and into this beautiful light and I could hear the most beautiful music and the most calming, calming, soothing peace and the most love I ever felt in my life and I do believe that presence that I felt near me was Yeshua assuring me this is where your mother is at. And when I woke up, I was outside of the church, and the ambulance was there. My grandmother was in a panic. Uh, my aunt was just weeping and sobbing. And I was taken to the hospital. Now, what my brother and my sister uh, tell me, what the family tell me, is we were in church. And all of a sudden, I started to slump over. And I slid down right underneath uh, the pew. And they rushed me uh, outside and called the ambulance. Well, they rushed me to the hospital. I remember I had all kind of tests. I still remember to this day. They had these electrodes hooked in my head, a brainwave test of some kind, monitors on my heart, and they could find nothing wrong, just that I was in such a state of calm that my breathing had slowed down to the point where I just kind of, everything let go. And they have no medical uh, understanding of what happened to me. But um, they couldn't find anything physically wrong, just that my breathing had slowed down to such a point. I was so relaxed. I wanted to share that with you. I know, being a young boy and my mom passing away the year before, and wanting to know, I knew how much she loved Yeshua. I needed to know, was she in that place that we were taught about? And I got my answer that day. 
is not all there is. This body that we live in is just temporarily a place for our spirit. You need to get a Bible and you need to read it. You need to start reading the living word because the word is the truth. We're going to spend eternity somewhere. Hell is just as real as the experience that I experienced as a young boy at ten, at 10 years of age. It's a place of torment, of torture. We're here for just this short while. This body, this shell, this holding place that our spirit is in. And we're just here. We're going to be judged on the things we do, on our actions, on our words, and how we treat others, how we live this life while we're here for a short time on this earthly plane. Everything we do, we're going to be judged on. And when we leave this body, this physical flesh, bone and blood body, you're going to spend eternity somewhere. You need, listen to me, listen to me, all of Bible prophecy is coming true as I speak to you right now. You're not going to see it in mainstream media news. You're not going to read it in your newspaper. You're not going to see it on Fox and uh, MSNBC, CNN. Uh, the Bible prophecies are coming to pass at a rapid place, at a rapid pace, rather. The Middle East is telling the tale of Bible prophecy. The earthquakes around the world, the animals dying. We are at a time right now where you've got to make a choice. Where are you going to spend eternity? You need to be baptized. You need to be submerged in water. And then you need to be baptized by the fire of the Holy Ghost. Your soul, that God, when he created man from the dust of the ground, <coughs> breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. That soul that you became needs to catch on fire with the Holy Ghost. When Yeshua came to this earth, the Word became flesh and lived among us. He went to the cross in this earthly body. He took all of our sins with Him to that cross. All you got to do is call on Him. Heaven is real. Let me tell you, it's a real place and so is hell. And there's no way. And this is not about religion. It's not about denominations, uh, Catholic, Protestant, Muslim. doesn't matter what your faith is if you're a Buddhist. There is only one way to have a glorious, eternal, everlasting life in heaven that is real. And that is to believe in only the one and only true Creator. There are many gods. Zeus and, and, and Apollo, these are gods. There's only one creator, and it's not Allah. There's only one true God, and it is Yahweh, the creator of the heavens and earth. And there's only one Messiah, and his name is Yeshua. And he came, the Word, the Word became flesh and lived among us temporarily so that we could be saved. You need to call on Jesus. You need to call on Yeshua right now. You need to go to your Heavenly Father right now and repent of your sins because you may not have tomorrow. You may not have tomorrow. Terrible things are coming to this earth. Terrible things that the world, that man, has never seen. You'll wish that you could die. Your heart will fail you for fear of the things that will come upon this earth. There are going to be hideous, hideous creatures coming out of the abyss. You are going to run for your life and have nowhere to hide. You're either going to take the mark of the beast or you're going to be murdered along with your family. There are going to be creatures coming out of the abyss, out of the abyss that look like a face of a man. They look like locusts, but they're 
hideous creature with a tail that will sting you like a scorpion. These fallen angels you hear us crazy Christians talking about, they're going to appear not in a supernatural form, but in a physical form. The giants of the Lord, as it was in the days of Noah, so will it be with the coming of the Son of Man. We are in the days of Noah. There's only one escape, and that's to call on Yeshua to save you now. I plead with you. There's only one way. This heaven is real, and hell is just as real. It's a place of torment for eternity. You wish you could die, but you won't die. You will be tormented, tortured, and tormented for eternity, and that's a long time. There's one way to escape. There's one way to escape. There's one way to escape all this that's about to come upon the earth. We were not appointed for Yahweh's wrath. Believe me. Say this prayer with me. Father God, I come to you a sinner. I am so sorry. Please forgive me. I know that you sent your only son to die on the cross at Calvary so I might be saved. And on the third day he arose. Jesus, I love you. Save me. Jesus, save me. Come into my heart right now. I proclaim this day that you are my Lord, my personal Savior, and my new best friend. I will spend the rest of my days serving you. Thank you, Father God, for forgiving me. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. If you said that prayer, send me a personal message. It's not all there is. We were created from the dust of the ground. But we have a living soul, a spirit. And that spirit needs to get caught on fire. If you said that prayer, send me a personal message. Get water baptized. Get submerged. Don't just get sprinkled with water. Get submerged. Then get baptized in the Holy Spirit. Your soul is for eternity. And it needs to get caught on fire with the Holy Ghost. I love you all. God bless you.